happy, happy Monday. Welcome to our Mondays of Learning. I'm going to invite my friend and business partner, Sart, to you and me right now. Yeah. So, Sart. Hi. Something we are happened before i couldn't connect i couldn't start the live for some reason sure. he didn't allow, allow me oh really did you turn off huh? i'm turning off my computer right now oh good <laughs> i was just asking you did you turn off your computer <laughs> no but it, it seems like it's working i'll even turn off my other my other iphone oh. right now <laughs> Just to be you like super. have so many devices around you. <laughs> I don't know. That might uh, be part of the topic we're talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe. So how is your day going? My day is going productively. Good. <laughs> good, good. Okay. So we are going to talk today about an anti-inflammatory lifestyle. Yes. And I would like to start to tell the audience that inflammation is a normal body mechanism. Mm -hmm. When you have an injury or when you have um, some disease, uh, your body or your immune system react to solve this problem. Yes. And in some cases, inflammation is necessary. The acute inflammation, for example, if we injure our hand, you are going to be that there is some swelling and redness and some signs of inflammation. That is normal because your immune system sends the soldiers, I, I like to call them soldiers, to just repair the area and help your body to heal and repair, right? Yes. The problem is when inflammation becomes chronic in your body. Exactly. And if we talk about a omega, the omegas are related with the inflammation as well. And the normal ratio of omegas should be one omega six and one omega three. The but problem nowadays, in huh? but nowadays Yeah, exactly. The problem is that actually in now we have a radio in the in average adult that is 25 omega 6 and just one omega 3 mm -hmm. so there is an imbalance there is no balance in these two and if people probably say but how come like where are we taking all of these omega 6 right so it's because we we don't have a healthy diet and we can have this omega-6 coming from processed food mm -hmm. and also from calorie empty foods and also from oils like canola, soy, sunflower, vegetable oil that the food industry say that they are healthy and our, our shelves are like inundated with these oils. Mm -hmm. But in reality, you, if you are cooking with, with canola oil every day, your radio or omega is going up every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that when there is something that is called cascade of inflammation, mm -hmm. and the, the, one of the vias of this cascade is the arachidonic acid, and this is base omega-6, mm -hmm. right? So imagine omega-6 in our body all the time. So the arachidonic acid is like up and up. So the inflammation is chronic and chronic and chronic, right? Yeah. We are we are harming our bodies, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is important that people understand that if they don't uh, have a good dietary choices and a good lifestyle choices, the body is 
going to react to that. And when you have chronic inflammation, you are going to develop diseases and imbalances in your body. Also, okay. So your intestines are not going to be balanced either. So there is also inflammation in your intestines for the food that, that you are choosing to eat, right? Mm -hmm. And because there are so many toxins outside that are putting in our food. For example, glyphosate. Yes, which is Roundup. Glyphosate which is Roundup, that is a, uh, suppose, allow no harmful uh, pesticides that are used to spread uh, our food, yeah? But in reality, is the glyphosate in your intestine acts like an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like it, it wipe out all the good flora, yeah. intestinal flora, and leave the space to the growing of a harmful flora in your intestine. Mm -hmm. And at the end, if this is like chronic and bad and bad, people end up having leaky gut. Oh, wow. And, and when you don't have a, a healthy digestion and a healthy digestive system that allows your body to absorb the nutrients that it needs to their optimal function, what is going to happen? If you don't have opt, well, you're not. You're going to be malnourished. Exactly. You can be undernourished. You can be malnourished, and you can develop chronic diseases as well, right? And oh, just problem, health problems. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. what are the foods that are really nourishing us? The fruits, the the foods that come from Earth. Yes. The problem with these foods now is that our soil is depleted because of the way of the ag agriculture is handling in nowadays. Yeah. So we are eating foods that are not rich in nutrients, like the foods were when our grandparents grew up. Hmm? Yeah. Yes. Uh, if you have, for example, if you, there are studies that have shown that a lot of the population are deficient in magnesium because the soil is not rich in this mineral that it used to be. And magnesium is necessary for more, more, for more than 400 metabolic processes in the body. Mm -hmm. Like metabolic, I, I mean, 400 functions in the body. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's complicated, right? Is something that we need to make conscious mm -hmm. and we need to think about and change. So what are some and foods? What are some foods that we should be eating? So vegetables, fruits, yeah. There are some if you can buy organic, certify organic, buy it. If you cannot, so you, even though you cannot, so choose also vegetables or fruits to be like a, a good portion of your daily dietary choices. Yeah. You can eat also healthy proteins. You can use healthy oils as a coconut oil and olive oil hmm? mm -hmm. to cook. So there are like a small steps that you can do to help yourself to maintain a good um, balance between the omegas as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, avoid this chronic inflammation that is in our body all the time. But it's not only about our dietary choices, are also about our lifestyle choices. Absolutely, so. So if people drink a lot of alcohol, or they are smoking, or they are like, um, no sleeping properly, no yeah. deprivation of sleep is related with inflammation. Mm -hmm. Chronic mm -hmm. stress is related with inflammation. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. toxins that we are exposed every day outside the environment are related with inflammation as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being in front of the electronic devices all day doesn't mm -hmm. help at all no. to us as well. No. So all 
these little things that you can change will make your life easy and better. Yes. Um, wow. So this is something that you're passionate about. Yeah. <laughs> um, so one thing, another thing is uh, we're talking about foods. And another thing is not eating. And we didn't write this on the whiteboard or in our little Google Keep. But I just wrote this down to inter just interject. Not eating, so fasting uh, um, is definitely something that people should look at as an option to uh, help to reduce inflammation because when you're in a fasted state, I'm, pre I'm telling you, but I'm telling the audience really, you're taking away the, um, you're taking away the, when the body is not having to digest, then it can be in, in the parasympathetic rather than the sympathetic state. Yeah. And that's when the body's in the rest and digest and rebuild and repair mode. Yes. And so not frequently eating, if your body does not need it calorically and nutritionally, then that is, a, that is an option to people. Yeah, but in that, it is an option, but people need to be aware that there are certain conditions that you, you don't want to fast when you have that conditions. For yeah. example, if you have chronic stress or you are burnt yeah. out or yeah. you have adrenal fatigue, I won't recommend my clients until that is addressed. Yeah. Because it's going, because it, going to put your body in, in a major stress, right? Yeah. If um, It can be difficult if you're prolonged fasted to fall asleep because you're, you are in, in a stressful... And also for, for women, when women want to fast, it's... It's good that they talk to someone that uh, know about the topic, that are an expert in the topic, because in some cases that can unbalance hormones. Yes, I think I was mistaken when I said parasympathetic when you're fasted. No, when you eat, you are in a parasympathetic state. But when you're fasted, your body has the opportunity to no, clean up it's, the... No, hmm? it's part of... The, the sympathetic system is the one that is in yeah. alert. Yes, the exactly. parasympathetic is the yeah. one that is raised and digest. Yeah, yeah. Raised and digest. So when you eat, you're in a parasympathetic state. And, but yeah, that, so that's just wanted to say. When that. you rest, you are in a parasympathetic yes, state. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, Betsy, anything else about in, in, in a diet or anything else that you were thinking about? Yeah, I can. I can tell people six foods that are powerful anti-inflammatories. And it yeah. can be just included in the diet, but also sometimes we need to do it therapeutically, right? Yeah. And increase the doses using nutraceuticals or supplements, good quality supplements, right? Absolutely. So one of the most potent uh, anti-inflammatories out there is the curcumin. Yes. Curcumin so, in combination with well, yeah. curcumin comes from Con what's what's in where's curcumin? Um, turmeric. Okay. It's a root. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So and, this is like an Indian. I think yeah. they're they're originally from India, and uh, curcumin is a compound that turmeric has. Yes. And um, this compound has been shown to act in all the different vias of the inflammation. But mm. it, it doesn't block the the process like, a, for example, an Advil do, right? Mm -hmm. Block the process. It modulates the process. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's one of the more potent anti-inflammatories, right? But to be able to be absorbed yes. properly can be combined with black pepper. Yes, and what's in black pepper? Piperine, which is an alkaloid, Piperine. yeah, that can help to absorb better the curcumin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now there are a recipe that is very popular outside, and it's the golden 
milk. <laughs> yes. Where you can put in curcumin, um, turmeric, curcumin, or because you can you can buy the powder as well, yeah. right? Uh, in in the vegetable milk, and you add a little bit of black pepper, and some people also add a little bit of butter or ghee. So it's well, it's like a, you can find you can find the recipe you can find many different recipes in the internet yeah. and just take the one that you prefer and you like the more but definitely if you are doing that like combine the curcumin with the black pepper yeah so it's more absorbable mm -hmm. another um and I know if and if you are going to do it thera therapeutically please consult with a practitioner that can guide you in in that, right? If you need something that is more, is a stronger, that just included daily in your, uh, in yeah. your, uh, in your dietary uh, intake. Because if you want to do it therapeutically, you need to be more than 1,500 milligrams a day. Mm -hmm. So, but you need to talk to someone that know where, why, how, mm -hmm. when, and why and how, right? Mm -hmm. Another very um, good uh, anti-inflammatory food is ginger. Mm -hmm. so, so, and ginger is not only good for all the system, but it's very uh, a viable and very uh, useful for inflammation in the intestine. Yes. And he has been using traditional Chinese medicine and also Indian, all the Eastern culture medicines. And a, a difference to the curcumin, it doesn't act in all the inflammation vias, just in some of them. But it's okay. also very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and another one is rosemary. Rosemary. Rosemary is a very potent anti-inflammatory and also have antimicotic, antimicrobial, and antibacterial properties. What's antimicotic? I know, but I'm saying. Uh, yeah, antimicotic is that. Um, what did you just say? Fungus. Um, fungus. fungus. Mm -hmm. yeah. For fungus. Yeah. So that is another potent one, and. Uh, also, it has been proved that it helps with parasites as well. But of course, if you want to do it therapeutically, you need to consume it in capsules in an oil, just guided for some specialists, right? Yes. But, but just include this herb in your recipes every day, right? A little bit. Remember, a little bit is going to be and build and build. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it will help. Another one is the capsule, capsaicin, capsaicin. Capsaicin. Capsaicin, thank you, which is founded in cayenne pepper. Mm -hmm. So the, this one also has a very important anti-inflammatory properties. And of course, omega-3. Yes. That is founded in fish and also in supplements. When you are going to buy a supplement with omega-3, you need to see the relationship that it has. Uh, just just talk to a specialist so they can guide you through the one which one is better is better and you should be taking more than fifteen hundred milligrams a day if it's in a therapeutic way. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And another one is green tea. I love green tea. Green tea is a potent antioxidant and it has also a it's a powerful antioxidant and has anti-inflammatory properties. Mm -hmm. So these six um, foods, you can just use it every day or include it in your dietary choices. And if you want to go deeper and uh, be guided for someone that know how to guide you and what is uh, according with your needs, just please talk to a specialist or to me. As well, to a specialist. To no, no, a specialist like you. Like me, yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> you made it sound like you're like, please talk to a specialist or talk to me. No, no, a specialist like me. Exactly. <laughs> like me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, so, well, I mean, that 23-minute yeah. rant, 20-minute rant was definitely um, evidence of your knowledge base. Yeah. That was pretty Great. impressive. And let's talk about <laughs> exercise and inflammation and well, what. Okay. Um, excessive exercise when you when you basically when you move your body through either digestion or through moving, that automatically will cause inflammation. Because you're rubbing joints together, you're rubbing tissue together, and inflammation will occur in a mechanical sense. So when you exercise. Uh, excessively, um, so there's one thing that uh, you will cause inflammation. There is uh, a topic called delayed onset in muscle soreness. So that is the soreness that occurs when you have the micro tears when you do uh, strength training. And you need to give your body time to for, for it to uh, recover. Pros, or not necessarily pro, pros experts, um, they they might not feel that soreness from strength training like beginners will. Like when you're a beginner and you've lift weights for the first time, boy, will you feel sore. So it's really good to have off days, especially if you're a beginner. Give your, it's about typically for most people, about 48 hours for the body to repair itself, the tissues to uh, repair themselves so that you can have, And but that's the thing is when, once it's repaired itself, you're, Muscles are just a bit stronger than they were before. And that's how you get stronger and bigger um, when, with strength training. So respect your off days. That's when you can do lighter intensity, slow, steady state lists, L-I-S-S types of exercise, right? Uh, light intensity, steady state exercises, walking, Pilates, yoga, things of that nature, mobility, uh, exercises and workouts. Um, those are things that you can probably do on your off days. And then when you, for your more vigorous days, yes, you hit the gym, you do your strength training. I, I tend to run if I, when I used to run, I used to run on, um, like that would be a vigorous day. So um, be careful if you run one day and then lift weights the next day, run one day, make sure that you're listening to your body because you're tearing your body up in different ways. So be respectful and give your body the break that it needs. Keep in mind that if you run a, a kilometer or if you walk a kilometer, you're still going to burn the same amount of calories. <laughs> so um, if it's just about calories, sometimes it's not about really working in your cardiovascular system. Consider walking, consider doing something a little lighter. Uh, so that you can bring that information down and you can re recover on your off days. Um, so yeah, when, when you do your blood work, there's a, there's a compound called creatine kinase, which is a byproduct of, of exercise, creatine kinase. So if your creatine kinase is high, um, that could be indication that you have some type of tissue damage, long-term tissue damage that might require some further attention so that's something that you get with regular blood work um you know when you do your annual physical for example probably your doctor will probably take that off um so that, that's something that um you know if you're noticing when you work out that yes um it's taking me three four five days to recover and it's that's taking that's like for a long period of time then talk to your doctor and see if that creatine kinase level is high. Mm -hmm. uh, besides that, I mean, just, yeah. Um, we didn't talk about, obviously, we need to stay hydrated. Um, yeah, very important. That's a, that's a no-brainer. And, um, and, and, and no with tap water, okay? <laughs> yes, absolutely not. Even here in Calgary, you know, the beautiful... Even here in Vancouver, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, yeah, no tap water. Uh, yeah, okay, that's mm -hmm. good. And what else? In terms of exercise, I think that's a good yeah. Uh, yeah. synopsis. Yeah, that was a good uh, summary um, and synopsis of that. And yeah, just you know about the life. Hmm? I can think of 
I mean, we talked about diet, exercise, sleep, hydration, stress, environmental toxins, drugs, or not to do them. Um, yeah, that's a good overview. Yeah. So in terms of lifestyle, be sure you are active and follow SART uh, guidance. And uh, in terms of sleep, make sure you are sleeping enough time. Like you have a good quality and quantity in sleep. And With you have alcohol, cannabis, and other drugs, you will not have the deep, deep sleep. Exactly. Yeah. The REM sleep. So, well, yeah. the REM sleep or the deep sleep. So, for the REM sleep, it's the REM sleep that you don't have when you're. The REM sleep. Yeah. yeah. And also, uh, make sure that you have good strategies to handle the stress. Yes. So, I mean, we've, there's a lot of mental fitness uh, things that you can do. And that's a big thing right now is, and if you can work on your mental fitness on a daily basis, that will bring, I mean, your whole body, like your brain, it will be uh, better apt to take on new stresses. So work on that every day, whether it be meditative walking, might it be meditation, would it be Whatever types of yeah. fitness suits your lifestyle. Deep breathing, deep breathing also because yes. most of us just forgot how to breathe properly. Mm -hmm. And that will help your body to relax. Mm -hmm. So it's important. Little things, active pauses during the day. Don't stay all day in front of your computer without just doing some getting up, doing some stretches, some deep breaths, breaths, like simple things that can help you day by day. And there are no, it doesn't cost money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go outside and like hug a tree and be close to nature. Mm -hmm. Walk barefoot if you can do it, because that also will help reduce inflammation in your body. So yeah, so many things. Yeah. Yeah, I think we covered everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think so. I think we covered a lot. Um, yeah. It's always more, but as you can see, everybody, we like to talk. Well, you like to talk today, but that's a <laughs> Yeah, I talked too much today. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was good. That's just exemplary <laughs> of your expertise. So. No, it's good. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. And thank you also for your guidance because it's always important. It's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been reducing my workouts to about 30 minutes just to, you know, I was going really hard for a while and I'm just 30 minutes a day. I think that'll be good for the next time, for, for, for the meantime. So I'm keeping being cognizant, and that's the thing. Periodize your workouts, and um, you know, don't they stay with the same exercise? Because well, walking, I mean, that's great. But uh, yeah, I mean, vigorous. Like, don't if you're doing the exact same thing all the time, all the time. All, like I'm talking all the time. Like you will develop uh, chronic, um, like re repetitive, like syndromes or. Uh, repetitive stress syndrome, so which is inflammation in a certain area, right? So keep yeah. that in mind too. Vary yeah. it just because I mean you see players in I'm sorry, but in pro sports in the NBA, for example, these kids are all they did when they were teenagers was they, they played basketball. They didn't play football, play play volleyball, and now they're getting injured all of the time because that's mm -hmm. all their body knows is the movement patterns for basketball. Yes, so. Yeah, that's true. And also, it's important to listen to your body. Yes. Your body is wise. The thing is that the majority of people are disconnecting from their bodies yes. because they are too much in their computer, game, TV, uh, hearing toxic stuff from outside. So you are not connected with your body. Your body can tell you what's going on actually, mm -hmm. inside yes. of you.
if you pay attention. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Anything that you would like to add, sir? No. No. Great right there. Yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, we will see you again next Monday, same time, mm -hmm. five thirty p.m. Pacific, six six thirty p.m. Mountain time, and eight thirty p.m. Colombia Miami time. Mm -hmm. Easter time. Okay. <laughs> okay. So everyone have a beautiful week and enjoy the life. It's short. Take care. Okay. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye, Sat. Bye, Bye. Bye, everybody.